Hey, friend. Here we are on video number four, the last video in this series that's really just getting your toe in just a little bit in this new life that you have as you've given your life to Jesus Christ. This vital part, this essential part of getting off on the right direction as you've given your life to Jesus. I hope that these videos help you kind of know some things to be on the right course, to be on the right track, to, to understand a little bit about what this thing is about. And, and there's so much more, of course, that can be said. It's a lifetime of getting to know God. It's a lifetime of diving into Scripture. It's a lifetime of discovering who we are to God and living that out. And there's so much to learn. I'm not even remotely pretending that these videos are, are doing justice to even the things that I talked about. But they're just trying to provide you some direction. So like I said in the first video of the plane that's taken off, that it stays on course. And you produce that fruit in your life because you're staying on course. You have the right mindset, the right heart. And from that, uh, you can dive deeper into things and God can show you so many things in your life and so many incredible things can happen through you that you never even dreamed was possible for your life. Listen, friend, I want you to know that God can do more with you than you ever thought possible. The truth is, when I was growing up, I came from a very poor background and a, a lot of, uh, of tragedies and, and different difficulties that happened that I believe there's very few people except, you know, maybe my mom and, uh, you know, maybe my brother or something like that that would look at me as a child and say, you know, that kid's got potential. Not, at least not anyone that was really growing up around. It was just the mercy and the grace of God, the help of God on my life. It was that, that, fi that favor and that help of the Lord and just that his mercy is in my life, that he's done things with my life. I've been all over the world. I've preached in places all in many different nations around the world. I've seen thousands of people give their life to Jesus. I've seen all kinds of miracles that have taken place. I've seen where God has done incredible things. And no one would think that I would have had that capacity. And I didn't in myself. I couldn't have done those things. I've written books. I've put together courses. I've seen people trained. And I've led leaders, and I've seen people launched in ministry. I have the privilege of pastoring an incredible church in North, in North Carolina, in New Bern, North Carolina. And I'm married to an amazing woman of God. And I have three beautiful children. It's just by the mercy of God. Mercy is where we, we don't get what we deserve. <laughs> and grace is by the grace of God. Grace is like... God's favor on your life, and it's his empowerment on your life to help you. It's like, uh, I heard somebody describe it this way, that if you are driving down the road and you get pulled over uh, because you're speeding and the you know, police officer comes over and, and they don't give you a ticket that you deserve to get, uh, that is mercy. I remember driving down the road, I was, my wife and I weren't married at the time, but I was driving her in her car and I was telling her that I had not gotten a ticket in a long time. And uh, I don't know if I was bragging or what the story was, but I was, while I'm telling her that, all of a sudden in a rearview mirror, some lights start flashing. You know, I got, I got pulled over while I was telling her that I hadn't gotten pulled over in a long time. And, uh, you know, it was interesting because the police officer came over and, and uh, you know, asked me how fast I was going. And, you know, I, I, I did a rounding. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but uh, you know, I like to round numbers, not not to lie about something, but just to, you know, to if it's close to a number. So, you know, if it's 11.53, I might say it's about 11.50 or it's about 11.55, something like that, uh, instead of saying 11.53. So he asked me how fast I was going, and I rounded up to the next five. And uh, he looked at me funny and said, well, actually, I had you at this number. And uh, I was like, oh, I'm sure, that's probably what I was doing. And, uh, you know, that shocked the police officer so much. Uh, I, I don't know what happened, but somehow I had mercy and I had favor. I got this ticket from the police officer, and I went to the court to pay it. And when I went to pay it, the clerk said, oh, this isn't a ticket. It's, it's just a fine. It's not going to go on your record. And I was like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there was some mercy there because I deserved a ticket. And so that's mercy is where you don't get what you deserve. 
And grace, in that same scenario, let's say you're getting pulled over, and while you're pulling over off, uh, off the side of the road because you're speeding, the, you blow a tire, you run over a nail, and pff, just blow a tire. Man, man, can this day get any worse? So mercy is that the police officer comes over and does not give you a ticket. Grace is that he goes over and changes your tire for you. He replaces the tire so that you can move again, so that you can, you can get up again and, and uh, have the ability to do something. There's a favor on that for your life, and there's the empowerment on your life. And what God has done in my life has been by his mercy. He's, I haven't gotten what I deserve, friend. There's no way in the world I have. Uh, and I've had such grace on my life to see the things that I've seen and to have the friends that I have and have the marriage that I have and the children that I have and to have the experiences that I've had and get to do the things that I get to do. It's been by the grace of God on my life, and it's all to his glory. It's by his mercy and his grace. And I'm telling you today that as you go after Jesus, as you pursue him, as you pursue real relationship. As you have Jesus as your Lord, and, and you're not just the big guy in the sky, but you're serving him. You surrendered your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And you have that heart soil in you to produce good fruit in your life. Man, there's, a, there's a mercy on your life. There's a grace on your life. There, God is going to do more through your life than you ever dreamed possible could happen through you. And I hope these videos help you and get you in the direction of seeing those things happen. And I, I want to say this, I, I hope that you pick up the basics in 21 days. I've highlighted that a few times, and if you haven't, it's on Amazon. You can pick it up online, either the PDF or the physical version. You can pick that up. Uh, you, I, I'm saying this because it will help you. It will help you. I worked hard on this book, and my wife helped me. We worked hard on that book. And I'm telling you that it will help you grow in your relationship with God. I highlighted robbing hell. And I also highlighted activating introverts in evangelism. Both of these are books that are about helping you to share Jesus with somebody else so that they can build that relationship with God. And when you do, share this video with them. Share this series with them so that they can get off on the right foot and go in the right direction. I worked really hard on these books and I believe that if you go through them, that you will have good fruit that will come out of your life. And that's why I'm highlighting them, not just like to simply get sales or something like that. You can buy these at places that money doesn't directly come to me. It goes, it goes to them. I'm just telling you that I believe that these, these materials aren't just a, a nice idea, but these things will help you in your relationship with God. And so I hope those things are things that you're looking into and that you have connected with a mentor, that you're looking into a spiritual community, a church somewhere. I really hope that you're doing that because I want to see you take off and I want to see you on course. As I was thinking about that, there's one more thing in this series I want to land on for us that if you get this, it'll help you so much. If you get what I'm about to say, It'll help your life so much. There's an interesting verse in, in Luke chapter 24 and verse 29. Luke chapter 24 and verse number 49. Jesus speaks about a promise. A promise of the Father is what he calls it. And I would suspect that if you ask most people, what do you think the promise of God is? Most people would say it's, it's Jesus. Jesus is the, the promise of God. But in this moment, in that verse, it's Jesus who's talking, and he's not talking about himself. And what I want to land on in this particular lesson with you is the promise of the Father, that if you understand and grab a hold of the promise of the Father, then what's possible in your life is, is, is beyond comprehension. Jesus said that the promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit can be called the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. God, the Spirit, or just the Spirit. You'll hear those kind of terminologies when you're around churches, uh, but it's the, the Bible most of the time speaks about him as the Spirit or the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus said this Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. And the reason that he's the promise of the Father is 
because of what this makes possible in your life when the Holy Spirit, uh, it, it comes into somebody's life. You see, Jesus was the one who made the way for the promise of the Father to come. This is important to get because uh, the Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father who could come into our lives because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. Let me say it this way. In the Old Testament, which I've highlighted in these uh, teachings before, uh, you had people that were building a temple, a place for God's presence to be, a place for God to be. And they would be... Uh, they would come to that place where God was at to meet with God. And, and the, the temple, the place where God was, was, was at, the place where his presence would be, that place and the priests that ministered to God in the temple, they had to all be cleansed. They had to be cleansed by blood, all right? And the reason that these places had to be cleansed is because if God was going to dwell in it, they needed to be completely clean and they needed to be holy. They needed to be what, what is called sacred space, a sacred space for God to be. Now, of course, Scripture is very clear that a little temple isn't a place that could hold all of God, but is uh, this place where could be cleansed, set apart, sacred space for God's presence and whatever measure could be could happen in that moment in that place. Well, God didn't want to stay in a building. The, what Jesus came is, be, when Jesus came, his death and his resurrection provided a way for us to be so clean and so forgiven that we could become sacred space. Now, this, is, this might be more phenomenal than you realize, but think about it this way, that no longer we are in a position where we need to go somewhere to a place where only God could be kind of in that place and his, his presence could be in that place. Even though God is everywhere, they had places that were sacred space to meet with God. That no longer do we have to go somewhere just to meet with God, but that we become the place. That we are the temple of the, of the Holy Spirit. That we become that sacred space where God dwells in us. Think about it this way. Everywhere you go, if you're a follower of Jesus, everywhere you go, God is there. Not just like God is everywhere kind of thing, but in you, on your life, you have access to the most intelligent, most loving, most powerful, most creative being who's full of solutions, who's full of hope. Everywhere you go, God is with you. Think, let that settle in for just a minute because I want you to get on the right course. I want you to know there's so much hope for your life. There's so much possibilities for you because the promise of the Father. Because Jesus said it this way in John chapter 16. He said, if I don't go, then the Spirit can't come. You see, he had to go. He had to die. He had to be resurrected from the dead so that we could be cleansed and become that temple of the Holy Spirit so that when we give our life to Jesus, something happened. Something happened to you when you gave your life to Jesus. The Bible says that you became one spirit with him, that you are joined together spirit to spirit with God where the Holy Spirit came to live inside of you and I don't pretend to understand how all of that works and what it looks like but it's real it's reality the spirit of God is inside of you that you are connected with God you are a temple of God and you have this place where anything is possible because nothing is impossible with him and he is in you and so as you serve him as you follow him as you're getting to know him as you're walking out your life he's the one that can help you in fact, the Holy Spirit in the Bible is also called the helper. It's a, a, there's a fancy word called the paraclete. Okay? This is not cleats that you put on. It's not paraclete's. Uh, but in the Greek, the paraclete, this is when it, it means one who comes alongside. The one, this helper, someone who comes alongside to help you. You see, you're not on your own in your relationship with God. You're not on your own in 
producing fruit in your life. You're not on your own and becoming who God created you to become. You're not on your own and getting free from things that God doesn't want you to, to have in your life. You're not, own, you're not on your own in fulfilling the purpose, the plan, the, the desire of God's heart for you to walk out. You're not on your own with that. You have the Holy Spirit joined together with you in your spirit as the temple of that he lives in. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so one of the dynamics you can do is begin to talk to him and ask him for his help. Holy Spirit, please help me. As you're getting into the Bible, I want to encourage you to ask the Holy Spirit to teach you because he's also called the teacher. He's also the one who is called the fruit of the Spirit. He's also the one who helps you to produce the character that God wants through your life. He is also the one who can empower you to do things that are supernatural, to do things that are outside of the natural order of things. You read about incredible events in the Bible, and uh, you look at these in the New Testament. How did people get healed? How did people get uh, raised from the dead? How did people receive supernatural knowledge and be able to say, these are the things that are about to happen, and this is what this person is like, without that person trying to figure it out. It was like they understood things, they knew things that they didn't know just out of figuring it out. Well, the, all of those things happen with the power of the Holy Spirit and the help of the Holy Spirit in somebody's life. In Acts chapter 1, and verse 8, you can look this up where Jesus was telling his followers, that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. And then the, the Acts chapter 2 records this happening where the Holy Spirit was poured out in a, in a prayer meeting. And then at the end of, that, uh, end of that prayer meeting, the others gathered to see what was going on because there was all kind of supernatural phenomenon that was going on. You can read that yourself in Acts chapter 2. At the end of that chapter 2, a spokesman in that moment, a guy named Peter, we call the Apostle Peter, uh, one of the early church leaders, he's explaining what's going on, and he tells them that uh, this promise of the Holy Spirit that they saw through this supernatural phenomenon that was happening in their lives with uh, where they were experiencing a powerful presence of God and they were speaking in other languages that they didn't naturally know and they were having visions of fire on them. Like you can read it, it's like super dramatic. It's amazing. Uh, he was saying that this spirit that enabled these things that happen in our lives is for all that the Lord calls. And it's to your children, it's to your children's children, it's to all that the Lord calls. And if you've given your life to Jesus, this is for you. Jesus paid a very high price for you to receive the Holy Spirit. So the Bible teaches this about the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches that when you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes into you in that moment. Okay? And the disciples had received Jesus. You know, they had Jesus rose from the dead, and they had received Jesus. They believed on him. But he said, in addition to that, uh, the, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you will have power to be his witnesses. You see, Jesus is very powerful. You read in the Gospels all kind of miracles that happen through his life, right? You look at those, it's phenomenal. And Jesus was saying that his followers are going to see things happen through their lives that show that they're doing life with someone bigger than they are. You see, when somebody interacts with you, if all they see through your life is what you can do, uh, you know, then they might attribute that, attribute what happens to your life to you. But when somebody looks at your life and there are things that are beyond what you could possibly have done, then they're like, man, something else is going on here. What is going on? And that's what the Holy Spirit will help you to do. He'll help you to have things happen through your life that show you're doing life with God, with someone that's bigger than you. And there are many places uh, that, many churches that call this other part where after you've received Jesus and the Holy Spirit's in you, this other part where the Spirit comes upon you, that they call this the baptism in the Holy Spirit. 
And I remember being 11 years old and I was hearing about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, it was at a church, a church camp. And the speaker told about it and then shared with anyone who wants to come and receive prayer that they would be empowered by the Holy Spirit. They could receive prayer. And listen, I want to be honest with you. Uh, I, I saw people getting prayed for and when they got prayed for, they fell down to the ground. I don't know if you've ever seen that happen. Uh, some people do videos and make fun of it, but it was, a real, it was a real thing. This wasn't on TV. This wasn't publicized somewhere. This was just a meeting. It was powerful, but it scared me. I, didn't, I hadn't experienced that before, and I didn't want to get manipulated, and, but I was hungry for God. And so I began to pray, and I said, God, I don't, I don't want anybody to push me down, but I do want you. So if this is you, then I want it. And I didn't let anybody pray for me in that moment. I walked in the back. I stayed in the back of the room while this was going on. And then all of a sudden, the, the strength from my knees down to my ankles went out, and I fell down on my knees. And I'm looking down at my legs, and I'm thinking, what's wrong with me? Do I need to get a doctor? Like, well, let me, let me try to get up. And so I, I was able to get up started walking around praying the same thing saying God if if this is from you then I want it but ain't nobody going to push me down and then all of a sudden the the muscles the strength went out from me and I fell on my back and when I fell on my back I felt wind hit my face and I felt God come upon me And I began to speak in other tongues. That's what um, Acts chapter 1 talks about in Acts chapter 2. And uh, that happened for six hours. And after that experience with the Lord, I started seeing miracles happen through my life. I started seeing when I prayed for people, they would get healed. Or I prayed for people and they would feel the presence of God in a way they didn't before that happened. And this is where Jesus says in John 16 that it's to your advantage that I go. Which is amazing to think about. He was telling that to his disciples he had been with for so long. It's to your advantage that I go. You see, the Holy Spirit gives you an advantage in life. He gives you the ability to to do things that you wouldn't be able to do on your own, to walk in a level of freedom in life that you wouldn't be able to do on your own. So I want to encourage you in this video, I want to encourage you to talk to the Holy Spirit. Read Colossians chapter 4. You'll finish out the book of Colossians, which is amazing, and the more you get to know God, the more incredible you will find Colossians chapter 4. I promise you that. Uh, <clears throat> the, the place where you're at now is a great place for you to start building a relationship. Just start talking to the Holy Spirit. And ask, the, ask God, ask the Father in Jesus' name, tell him, I want to be baptized in the Spirit. I want to have your power on my life. You may not have an experience like I did. I my wife had a, a different experience that uh, was not as dramatic. I know many people have different kind of experiences when it comes to receiving the power of the Holy Spirit, but they often have more power in their life out after that moment than they did before, whether the moment was dramatic or not. And so you can ask your, <clears throat> your mentor to pray for you. You can uh, go to your church and ask them to pray for you and start asking the Holy Spirit to help you in your life. If you do that, the Holy Spirit, you begin to be, build this relationship with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> then the Holy Spirit can lead you in the truth. The Holy Spirit can help you produce the fruit in your life. The Holy Spirit can help you be a witness for Jesus in powerful ways. I want to pray that for you, and I want to encourage you in this last video to really go after that relationship with the Holy Spirit. And you do that, friend, you're going to be on the right track.
Thanks for watching these. I want to pray for you here right now, and I want to bless what God is doing. I want to bless your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to bless your life, your new life with Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I bless this person, and I ask for your hand on their life in a powerful way. Holy Spirit, I ask you to be upon them. I ask for a baptism in your spirit. And God, I ask that you would lead them in the truth, that you would help them produce fruit, <clears throat> that you would strengthen them and do more with their life than they ever thought was possible. To your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, friend. Bless you. Share this with somebody else. Lead somebody else. When you lead somebody else to Jesus, then send this video, these videos over to them so that they